Okay. All right. The first example we're going to do is on your textbook, 2B2. So if you have, have a textbook, find the example 2B2. It's an example with a pulley system. Looks like a pulley. First, look at that problem. Look at what are the givens and what do we need to find. Questions? No, I'm just staying with givens. Okay, yeah. Uh, the velocity of the is three millisecond, uh, three meters per second. Yeah, we know V8, three meters per second. And Small radius is half a foot. The larger radius is a foot. Okay. Wait. It's different than the notes I have, but okay. It's fine. On my notes, I probably have the older versions. So I have radius of 0.5 meters and one meter. Yeah. Okay. It says I put on here for some reason. All right. <coughs> we want to find three things. First, we want to find Where's the IC for this pulley? So we have a pulley that one end of the pulley, it's uh, connected with the wall uh, to, the, to the ceiling. And there's another um, rope is connected with a smaller pulley, it's pulling up. So we want to find out what is the instant center for this rigid body. I want you to think about that, how to find the instant center. And the second thing we want to find is the velocity at point B. So VB, what is VB? Point B is right above point O. Point O is the center of this pulley. Points, then the third question is, ask you to sketch velocity vector for B. So that that would be just something similar to our quiz on Friday. You need to sketch where's the direction of a velocity vector. Okay, let's first look at where's the IC for this problem. Where's the instant center? Where's the point has zero velocity? O. Oh. Does point O have zero velocity? That's a good guess. Any other guess? Any point on this pulley, on this wheel, has zero velocity. Think about the example we did in class. If you're driving your car, <coughs> where is the contact point? That contact point is a zero instant center. Do we have anything similar to that? If use, if we call this point A, uh, no, that's point A. Let's call point C, point D, point E. All right, any other guesses? Which point could potentially be the instant center of this wheel? Imagine if we have a rope connected with point A and you drag that rope up. So the whole pulley is rolling, rolling about which point? If 
Yeah, it is maybe it's a little bit difficult to look at this way, but if we change this system onto to a horizontal direction, would that be easier to look at? Maybe we replace that with the surface. Can you see that? Now we just have everything in a vertical direction. So in this problem, point C is our IC for this pulley. So when you pull at point A at a constant speed, and the whole pulley is rotating, the rigid body is rotating about point C, rotating this itself. Point O is moving on Y direction. So point O has velocity, has non-zero velocity, which is not instant center. Okay. Questions? Can you do the same thing with the lines? I just wanted to know. See that again? Like, you can, can you do the same thing with the lines and the manufacturer that was just reduced that was at different speed? Let's try. We have six steps, right, to teach you how to find instant centers. Can we apply those steps to find instant center instead of just Dr. Ayo telling you that's the fact what is instant center? Let's confirm if the master I told you guys was right. <coughs> so, what's the first step? Yeah, first find two points that we know velocity. All right, and I can tell you with point A, we definitely know velocity. We know the direction of velocity. Any other points, we know the direction of velocity. No? If you have a wheel, what are the special points I mentioned? At the center of the wheel, it's always a special point. The center of the wheel can only move on one direction. Just like your car, if you're driving on highway, the center of your, your wheel hub can only move on one direction, on the vertical, on the horizontal direction. If your car, that center of your wheel is moving on vertical direction, something bad is happening. Okay, so what's the direction? What's the direction of velocity at point O for this property? It's going straight up. So now do we have two points? We know velocity, direction of velocity. Let's do that. Let's use the green color to show this is direction of VA. And we have a direction for <coughs> VO. Okay, that's an interesting case here. Then the third step is to draw a perpendicular line to those directions, right? So we have well, what happens these two lines kind of overlap with each other. That's interesting. These two lines are overlap each other. Why right? did path point C and also pass point D? They parallel to each other, overlap with each other. Actually, that's a very interesting. I never thought about that. Does that four steps to find instant center apply to a wheel that is rolling? I think wheel is probably a special case. You have to look at instant center, at, at look at a contact point. But that's a very, thank you for asking me that. I'm making thinking, and now I can, I can go back to ask my colleagues why we couldn't find the instant center but use those methods for wheel. Okay, All right. So then remember that if you have a wheel or pulley, that would be a special case and it would be hard to use the steps to find instant center, but the steps I told you guys are very helpful when you have linkage problems. Okay, now we have the IC for this wheel, which is at point C. 
um, can we use that to find out what is the baby? What is baby? Baby. Huh. Now let's first look at what equation we learned from all the six steps. The last two steps, it's all about equations. In step five, there's an equation to tell you how to find omega. In step six, there's another equation to tell you how to find the speed of any point on this rigid body. So here, point B, it's a point on this rigid body. So can we apply step five and step four? Let's first apply step five. What's the equation in step five? Omega equals what? Omega equals what? What's the equation look like? So VA over RAC. So we need to find you now what is the speed of VA? I think means is given. What is RAC? That's a distance from point A to the instant center. What's the distance from point A to instant center? Instant center is here. Point A is right there. What's the instance in distance in between? That is uh, that's just big R, right? So here we have big R. Um, v A divided by big R. That's how we find out what is the omega for this problem. Oops, sorry. V A is right there, so we are we need to consider that small r. The distance from A to the instant center is big R plus small r. So here is big R plus small r. This is the angular speed of the rigid body of that whale. How fast the rotation is. How much is the rotation speed? Okay, once we have omega, now let's apply step six, the equation from step six. We can use that to find any speed, any point, speed of any point on the rigid body. Here we're looking at B. So VB equals omega times what? What's the equation? Omega times something. What is that something? RBC. Yeah, RBC, that's a distance from point B to point C, R, B, C. So here we have omega times, we can use that omega V, A, divide by R plus R times R, B, C. What's the distance from B to C? That's just R, R. that's a big radius, so times R. Now we have it. Now we have the speed of point B. Okay. Can we use other methods? Question? Why is it big R right there? I didn't know it looked like it was. Big yeah, from B to C. Yeah, what's the distance from B to C? Shouldn't it be times the square root of two as well? Let me check. Where's point B? Oh, my bad. We have enough coffee this morning. Okay, yes, you're right. Point B is right here. For some reason, I thought point B is at the center. All right, so we want to find out the distance from B to C. That's the distance we're looking for. So yet, in order to find that distance, we need r, r, so r squared plus r squared square root. 
That's a triangle. We we'll look at the hypotenuse of that triangle. So that is now times r. Here should be r squared plus r squared square root, which is r times square root two. Okay. So that will help us to find the speed of VB. And how to find the direction of that VB, direction of velocity vector of VB. Now we know the instant center. How, do, how can we use instant center to find the direction of a point? Yeah. So go, if you go back to the, the plot here, let's use different color. So the direction of VB should be perpendicular to the, the connection lines between B and C. Now we already have a line that is between B and C. If we can draw a perpendicular line to this green line, that line will tell us the direction of VB. This is a perpendicular line. So VB can either move that way or that way to decide where's the rotation of, where's the direction of VB. You have to look at how everything's rolling. So everything's rolling that way. Okay, rolling up. So there's only one possibility. VB can only move those that way, the up, left corner. So that's how we decide the direction of VB. So that's the direction of VB. Yeah, that is one problem of instant center method. Now we have the speed, the magnitude of VB, and we have the direction of VB. Well, if you want to write VB as a vector, then you have to do some, um, some math to find out that, right? So now we have, this is a, only the speed of VB. And now we know the direction of VB. If you want to put VB in a vector form, you have to use that, find the angle, find out what is, how much is on I direction, how much is on J direction, right? I see the instant center method can help us to find the magnitude of speed and directions. But if you want to write everything in vector form, then you have to go back to that figure to draw a triangle, try to figure out, try to figure out Okay, how much VB is on I direction? How much VB is on J direction? Right, to find out angle, to sine and cosine. Right? Do we have other ways to do this? Instant center is just a method. Remember at the beginning of this chapter, we learned the equations. If we have a rigid body, we can build a relationship between any two points, right? So that equation is VB equals VA plus omega cos product RB slash A. Yeah, you can use that equation. A, B. Or maybe, maybe it's hard to use that directly, but you can build point relationship between any two points. Maybe before you do that, you should build a B, B and B, C, because C, it's an instant center, so it gives you zero velocity. R, B slash C. So if you just use these two equations, you probably can't find out what is B, B in vector form. So either way, it depends on the situation. You can try it both the method, instant center method, or the equation we learned in section 2A. Either way, you will get the same answer. So VB as a vector should equal to two, negative 2i two plus 2j meters per second.
That means that angle right there is 45 degrees. Okay. So a problem in this chapter can be solved either use the equations from 2A, the velocity equation, or you can use instant center method to find instant center and to use the equations from step five and step six to solve velocity, angular velocity and the velocity of any points. Okay, any questions on this problem? Okay. And let's do one more practice. It's on your book 2B4. before there's only one link it's a beam rigid body a b so the beam a b is linked against a wall and the other end is on the floor and we know the speed f one b Angle is theta at this moment. Velocity or speed of VB or point B is VB. The total length of that rod of beam is L. And it's, sleep, it's sleeping. And I think on the problem it says there's no friction, so friction should be considered. So what will be happening? You can imagine that rigid body AB is going to slide in down, right? Eventually, you're going to lay down on the ground. But at this moment, it has this angle, and this point has this speed. OK. I feel like I'm going to fail asleep again. All right. Stand up, every guys, and let's take a break. All right, I'll stand up. All right, anybody like to weight lifting? Do we have any bodybuilders here? All right, okay, one. All right, give me, do you guys know bench uh, shoulder price? Shoulder price, right? Imagine now you have 20 to 20 pounds dumbbells on your hands and give me 10 shoulder price. All right, one. Two, three, four, or uh, count yourself, do 10. Okay, feel that blood is pumped up to your head and your shoulders. Okay, all right, hope that wakes you up a little bit. All right, now keep standing this position. Look at this problem. This is a rigid body. Can we find instant center for this rigid body? Is there an instant center for this rigid body? Where's the instant center? Follow the steps. Mm -hmm. uh, where, it rotates, where, where it rotates. Okay, one question. Should that instant center on the rigid body or outside the rigid body? Outside, outside the rigid body. Okay, so follow the steps. You can find two points that you know the direction of velocity. You know direction of velocity at point B. That's pretty good. What's the direction of velocity at point A? You can only move downwards. That's the only direction you can move. So we know two directions of two points. Now you draw a perpendicular line to these directions. Where's the intersection? One line is here, another line is here. The intersection is going to be somewhere above VB, right there. So that is your instant center. Okay, can we use that instant center to find out, I think in this problem, we want to find out what is the angular velocity of this rigid body AB. Okay, now you can see down to work on how to find angular velocity.
give you two more minutes to do some calculations, apply equations. See, where is the instant of uh, angular angular velocity of the vision bar? Okay, let's all look at this together. Okay, the first thing we use the instant center method to solve this problem. So at step five in the instant center method, we know the equation is omega is equals to VB, the point you know the velocity, divided by the distance from V to the instant center. So, well, I know we know what is VB, which is three. I think we need to find out what is the distance from point B to the instant center. Point B to the instant center is this line right there. Okay. If we know the beam, that AB has length L, and we want to find out what is that length. Let's call this point C. By using the given angle theta, we know theta, we know hypotenuse, we want to find the offset, offset edge of that triangle. So that BC, R, B, C, the distance, the length of that edge is just sine theta times L. Now we have it. Remember that's a magnitude. So here we have L times sine theta. That would give us uh, the distance from B to the instant center. Well, right away we find out what is the angular velocity, angular that's speed. That's the magnitude of angular velocity of the wheel. That's pretty quick, right? But also we can use other method. We can use the method we learned from section AB. We can apply velocity equations. So this is the instant center method. In this problem is pretty quick. We can also apply equations. Method number two, it's mem number one. The second method we can apply equation VA equals VB plus omega cross product RA slash B, right? And we can solve this equation by plugging everything we know. We know the direction of both VA and VB. So on the left hand side, we have VAI equals VB. Oh, that's J, V A J plus V B I minus omega cross product R A slash B. So you have you have to find out what is that precision vector pointing from B to A. That'll be that precision vector. That is R A slash B. 
So you need to find out what is that vector. It's pointing, it should have negative i component and positive j component. So that is omega cross negative l cosine theta i plus l sine theta j. This is that vector r a slash b. If you do the cross product and you are able to solve what is omega from this vector equation. So you can solve that, solve omega equals, you get, you will get very exactly the same result. Well, if you compare this with what we find, that's exactly the same thing. Omega equals they be divided by L times sine theta. So you have different methods for to solve problems. Either you use equations or you can use instant standard. Well, there's no standard rule which one is faster. It just depends. Sometimes instant center is faster. Sometimes apply velocity equation, it's a faster way. Okay. We have 10 minutes left. Let's do a practice. Let's, for example, 2C1. Yeah. So you, this example will be on your own and you have 10 minutes. Either you can work on your own or you can talk to your neighbors to see how to do this problem. Draw the diagram on So in this problem, we have a wheel and on the wheel on the top there and the wheel is connected with a link at point A. The link has a length L and the other end of the link, point B, is connected with a block, with a box. So we know point B, we know this, block, this box B is moving to the left with the speed VB. O is the center of the wheel. We know the contact point has no slip condition. We're given VB equals five feet per second. Theta is zero. L equals two feet. R equals 0.5 feet. We want to find out omega and alpha. Alpha is the uh, angular acceleration of that wheel. That's well, okay. Not that problem. of the wheel. When theta equals zero. So theta, it's angle between AO and horizontal direction. That's theta. Okay, try to practice this problem on your own and it will be a good opportunity to ask questions. If you raise your hand, if you have any question, I can come down to you and help you.
The first question I have for you that formula is how many energy body do we have? How many energy bodies do we have in this body? Is it your energy body? One, two, three. Three energy body means how many angular velocities? Question for you. This link AB is connected with this rail at that point. Do we have the same angular velocity? Not necessary. When they're connected, they could have their own angular velocity. You know any special point? When you see a special point, a zero velocity, it's that one only special point. Well, point O can only move on horizontal direction. So if you can you want to write out KO, KO is gonna look like KO equals KOI plus zero J. But there's not nothing on J component for bridge. <coughs> Same thing for B. A, B can only move on X direction. So when you write out velocity vector for A, B, A, B only has X of I component. The J component is zero. Okay. 
I will leave this problem as well for your own practice. If you want have one solve this problem and but don't know how and where to start, and come to my office power, I can teach you that. Uh, that's all we have for today. You have on Friday. Keep that in mind. We have a quiz on Friday. That means you can bring your laptop or iPad or smartphone devices so that you can access to more of our quiz.